I'm Carl Erickson. We're here at the Owl's Head Transportation Museum in Owl's Head, Maine. The ocean's right over those trees. Uh, and this behind me is a 1916 Sopwith Pup. It has an original 80 horsepower Lerone rotary engine. Very reliable, uh, very smooth running engine. It is not very powerful. Uh, they put on very light airplanes early in the war, but it was a, uh, it was a very good engine first time. It is lubricated by castor oil, which is a vegetable-based oil, and it's a one-way oil system. When the engine's running, it throws it out everywhere through the valves, and it just gets over the pilot and everything all over the airplane, and it goes away into the footstream. Um, it, this airplane was considered the Spitfire of World War I. It was considered the finest flying airplane of World War I. For a, a pilot's point of view, it was a delight. It was undergunned. It was a light, light airplane. It held its uh, performance well at altitude because it had very broad wings, high lift, very light. How high could it fly? What's that? How, How high? high? I understand they were going to 18,000 feet. But it was only had a single machine gun, so pretty soon it was outgunned by the Albatross fighters. Where it, was, it could outmaneuver an Albatross by far, but it was still undergunned. Take, take us through starting it. You have to prime every cylinder by hand. So you have one guy pulling the propeller and another guy pushing a valve open and shooting raw fuel into it. Pilot's in the back. He has a mixture set, he has the fuel on, he has the uh, everything off, the switches are off. So one cylinder at a time, you will load up, or the next cylinder, load it up, next cylinder, and usually it pops right off. We, you can choke these things, <coughs> those are the intake tubes inside. You can get one uh, mechanic on each side, holding that tight, if you get the mixture in the right spot, you hear it suck. <coughs> Not quite at idle, but around there, and a pilot kind of windmills the propeller. You can suck it, suck it. The trouble is, you got a lot of fuel and it's leaking inside. You could get a fire. If it backfires through the crankcase, you could get a fire going in. The nice thing about a rotary, there are some advantages. It's self cooling. Uh, it, there's no radiators, there's no water lines, there's nothing to leak. But it is also is instant run to fly. There's no warm up time in a rotary because it's, an, it's a one way oil system. You don't have to warm the oil up. So as soon as it fires and the castor oil is running, off you go. You don't have to warm it up. We're water cooled. Mercedes, the Germans had to warm their engines up and all that stuff, so you couldn't. Takeoff procedure, well, geez, give it a good run up. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> there's a pulsator in the cockpit that I've never seen work, and it tells the oil pressure. It, it, it tells that the oil pump is pulsating, you know, if it's working. It hasn't worked. So but there's no really brake. No anything. You run this thing up, and uh, single mag, there's no mag check. So you just check the. And I just. To get my memory back, which way, uh, what makes it quit? You want to know what makes it quit. So um, it's usually with the fight adjustment goes behind the, uh, the throttle, you know, the, the big arm. If you get it behind there, it usually quits. It's a lean cut. So if you just shove it forward, it lets fuel go in again, it's instantly rich again and it rocks. Uh, on takeoff, you'll lose full, you need full rudder. You'll, if you give it, if the wind's the wrong direction, I was going to say, if the wind's from your right, if it wins from your right on takeoff, you'll it, you'll have full rudder and you can almost ground loop it on takeoff if you let the tail up go really fast. Because the tail comes up instantly. This thing could be off the ground in, in 50 feet if I let it go. But um, you run out of rudder. I had full left rudder. And it finally started to go as the airspeed built up. But it just, you know, it flies like a normal air. Now, 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 tell me about the, the torque of the engine. Well, again, it's uh, we fly it at a, uh, I fly at a low RPM, so I'm babying this engine. So you don't get much. You have a gyroscopic precession uh, when you have 300 pounds spinning like this. So if you yank on it, I believe in a left-hand turn, it's very fast and it wants to go down. I believe in a right-hand turn, it wants to go up and very slowly. So camels, which had a lot more horsepower and everything situated in seven feet of the fuselage, uh, it was quicker to go left. 270 degrees, and it wants to go right 90 degrees. <laughs> but the pilots would know this. You know, the enemy would know this. But if you yank on it, you get you get this gyroscopic precession kind of thing. And so it it's, it's it's it turns it's easier slow. to the left, not it to the right. Turns easy to the left and not to the right. How long will it fly? I've understood up to three hours. And that to do that takes how much fuel? They're gas hogs. It would probably take all. They probably take 30 gallons. And then how much uh, gas oils with it? I think it runs out. I, I, I believe it was probably a gallon an hour, about three gallons of gas per hour. Okay. And I understand that when the oil ran out, the gas ran out. So, uh, so in a cruise situation, <laughs> you're going to be at what, 1,100 RPM, something like yeah, that. Yeah, probably. And on landing, when you just landed it, just then, what was your? Tell us about your landing just then. Well, you what you don't want to do is play with the mixture when you're coming to land. 
so I set it a little bit high. I come in a little high, and you slip. Slip's nice. I didn't put it on a hard slip, but you just blip the engine. You shut the ignition on and off. Yeah. Because you don't want to be in a situation where you're trying to mess with the mixture and it quits on you. It's, I've had it happen. Bounce and landing, and the key doesn't come back to you, and boy, you're in a bad What air speed? It, it lands at about 30 miles an hour. Well, you came, you were really, high angle of attack. you were really blipping, blipping, blipping. Oh, yeah. You, you were going like crazy. Down. Blip, 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 blip. The thing is, if you hold the blip down too long, you'll foul it up. Because it's still pumping, it's still pumping fuel and oil into the spark plugs, you know, into the cylinders. Right. So you can foul this thing up pretty easy. So if you let it off a bunch, but really, she put you back in the seat. It's got thrust. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, well, you, know. you can see it in the trees back there. Yeah. It was definitely got some wind there. I mean, the 160s are a lot more powerful, but but it, you know, it uh, it lands about 30 miles an hour total cost. If the wind, if the wind's blowing, and there's a way to think about it, it's got the same area as a J3 Cub, uh, double the wing area of a J3 Cub, really, at the same weight. So can you imagine on a windy day what it takes to land this thing? It takes Total concentration, total concentration to put this thing on the ground. This is a delight tonight. It's just big, um, beautiful flying. How, how many stop were made of uh, puffs? Hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds. This is the first airplane to land on a, on a moving ship. Stop with puffs. Right. So they had leather handles. You see the picture of them grabbing the handles right. as they. Yeah. Because against the wind, you know, it's, it's landed at 15 miles an hour. Didn't they crash it when they took it off, though? No, his engine quit and he went off the edge. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that very day, drowned. Yeah. But it was the first airplane to take off from a moving ship. Take off and land on a moving ship. Thanks a lot, Carl.